so hi guys my name is Najiketa welcome back to my channel in this video I'm gonna tell you how you can exactly score a 330 plus on the GRE exam also whatever resources and sites and books I mentioned in the video I'm gonna leave a link for that in the description you can find that over there before getting started I just wanted to put it out there that this is gonna be my new channel where I'm gonna put lots of videos regarding MS applications uh, higher studies TOEFL exam, GRE exam, the entire application process for people who are applying for higher education. So if you're new to this channel, do subscribe so you get updated whenever I put out new content. And let's get started. So before I actually talk about the exam, uh, let me show you my score so that you know what I'm talking about. So, so this is my test report on the ETS website. And as you can see, I scored a 164 on my verbal and a 168 on my quant section, which amounts to 332 and a four on the analytical writing section. So I'm gonna cover the quantitative and verbal section in this video because that is what is the most important thing which is scored out of 340. The writing section is not something I'm gonna cover in this video. So before actually studying for the exam, it's very important to study the exam itself, right? So GRE stands for graduate record examination and you're gonna have to give it if you're applying for higher education in most countries and especially in STEM based programs, GRE, is mandatory in lots of countries. Now, 300 is the average GRE score, which is roughly in the 50th percentile, and getting anywhere above 330 is gonna put you in the 97th or 98th percentile, which means only two or three percent of test takers are able to get that score. So having a 330 plus in your GRE is definitely gonna give you a competitive edge in your application for any college. So I'm gonna structure the video like this, right? There are gonna be four broad parts. I'm gonna talk about the exam structure, I'm going to talk about how to prepare for the quantitative and verbal section, the resources that you can use, and finally the exact study plan that you should follow, the number of hours that you should study, how many mock tests you need to give, and things like that. Coming to the exam structure, it has a quantitative verbal section. There are going to be five sections in the exam, a quant, a verbal, a quant, a verbal, and finally one fifth section which can be either quant or verbal. So each section will have around 20 questions and 35 minutes. So it's a timed exam so you need to be quick enough. Also the GRE exam is adaptive, which means that the first section that you get for both quant and verbal is gonna be of moderate difficulty. Now if you perform really well on this section, the next section that you're gonna get is gonna be comparatively harder. So if you answer around say more than 15 questions correctly, you will get the next section of a higher difficulty. If you answer less than 15 questions correctly, you'll get the next section of moderate difficulty or you can even get an easier section. Now you do not want to get an easier section because even if you get all the questions correct in the easier sections, you cannot get full marks. So it's important that you do the first sections really well. And I'm going to talk about the strategies you can use for that. The first step that I highly recommend before starting your GRE preparation is to book your GRE test. So fix how much time you're going to devote to the GRE. For example, say you're planning for two months of preparation. So book the test two months from now. There are many reasons for this. First, that when you actually spend $200 from your account, the seriousness is going to creep in and you're going to start studying seriously. The second, if you try to book a test at the last minute, you'll probably not find it. It's normally very uh, tightly scheduled. So it's better to book it in advance. Now, the next thing that you should do after booking your test is to give a mock test. So when you book your test, you'll automatically get a free mock test. Even if you don't have that, you can just get a mock test from online. You can just download the GRE paper, solve it by yourself and grade yourself as well. Right now, it's very important you give the mock test so that you know where you stand and how far you have to go. Now, there's this myth that if you want to score 330 plus, you have to be already amazing at it and you should probably get a 310 on your first attempt itself. That's not the case. I remember the first test that I gave, I scored uh, 298. Right. So I knew I had more than 32 points to increase if I had to get 330 plus. So you have to plan your strategy according to that. Now, when you give the mock test, you'll automatically see what is your weak areas. For example, in the quantitative section, there are lots of topics like algebra, geometry, statistics, probability, permutation and combinations. There are so many topics, right? Now, these are very basic topics and most of it is something that you've studied in high school. Yet, there are going to be some topics in which you are particularly weak. 
right so when i give the mock test i immediately realize that i had forgotten some formulas of geometry because when you're giving the exam you have to remember special properties of figures like a trapezium and its relationship with different sides and angles there's a lot of stuff right so when you give the exam you'll immediately recognize your weak points and that is what you have to work on so for the quantitative section what i recommend is first give the mock test and then start studying for it now the best resource that i personally used was the magush's online platform i'm going to show you that as well and i'm going to tell you what you can do if you don't want to use that so this is my magush dashboard so basically it has questions for both maths verbal and writing sections and the best thing is that you have the entire syllabus as you can see geometry general math strategies arithmetic and fractions so for each topic you're going to have a separate video right so first you need to study that for example you can see polygons regular polygons circles over here right so you first study the video you study the concept and then you solve the questions respective to it i personally did not watch each video in that so basically you have to analyze what is your weakness study the concept first then solve the questions now if you do not have the magush platform the concept remains the same you get the quantitative syllabus for each topic you watch its videos right on you can watch it on youtube as well there are many youtubers which are teaching gra quantitative so study the concept and then practice questions the magush platform uh, already has lots of practice questions it has around as you can see 772 math questions 500 verbal questions and you should practice all of these and if not another great resource for practicing your questions is your manhattan's 5lb book i highly recommend this because as you can see it has questions for both verbal section right and your quantitative section you can solve individual topics like fractions percents divisibility and primes and you can analyze how weak you are in which section and at the end there is a section which i really love it is the advanced quantitative section which i highly recommend you do if you're aiming for anywhere near 170 in your quant section now the concept remains same even if you're practicing in magush right you have an option to set the difficulty level i specifically remember in my last week of gre prep i only practiced questions of difficulty hard and very hard you have other platforms like kaplan and princeton and manhattan all have the same concept you can set the difficulty level right i personally use magush that's why i'm recommending that but i recommend practicing hard questions in your last week at least now i'm going to get to how many hours you need to put in but let me talk about the verbal section before that verbal section is one of the more harder sections in your gre it consists of three types of questions your sentence equivalence text completion these two are more like fill in the blanks right you need to have a good vocabulary knowledge to solve these two questions and third is your reading comprehension for reading comprehension you basically have say a paragraph yeah you have to read that and answer questions based on that you need to have good vocabulary as well as good reading skills for that so let me tell you how you can prepare for this for your vocabulary a common question is how many words you need to memorize there's no fixed answer for that but anywhere up between 1000 and 1500 words is a very good uh, thing to target and popular sources are magush flashcards manhattan flashcards and your gre word bot and your barons 800 Right now, which one you want to use? It depends upon you. There are different styles, but most of these will have overlapping words. Now, coming to how to memorize these words, there are three different approaches. A, you can directly memorize the word. I recommend you read a word and then you write it down. I personally had written around fourteen hundred words in my notebook. If you write it down, you're gonna remember that for a longer time. And you, when you write down a word, also write down. a sentence in which you can use it and you learn a word you also need to learn how to use that in a sentence second approach is mnemonics so basically uh, you can use pictures to memorize words and gre word bot does this uh, for each word basically they'll have a picture which represents the meaning of the word and people find it easier to memorize that way you can do that as well and the third approach which is by far the most effective one and i highly recommend that is remembering and analyzing the root words so in english right basically any word which you see is going to have a root word which is a base word from which the word is derived so there are going to be many words which are derived from the same base word and hence will have similar meanings so for example let's take the word credibility right this is a common english word you might have heard of it when you say that is this news source credible you mean that can you believe in that news source is it is it authentic 
right now another not so common english word is credulous and you might not know the meaning but it has the same root word cred right and it means uh, a tendency to believe in things there's another word called credulity again not so common it has the same root word cred and it means a person's willingness to believe in something how gullible he is right so when you say you spot the word credulence in the exam you spot the root word and you can take a guess that it might have a meaning which is related to belief and you see if it fits in the context right and then you take a much better guess right so this is a very effective technique because you're gonna find hundreds of words which share the same root words when you're studying for your GRE vocab and for this specific purpose I recommend Manhattan's flashcards it's free to use and for each word they'll tell you the origin of the word the root word and very popular synonyms and antonyms for every single word and this is approach you can use and the reading comprehension is one of the toughest sections because even if you're a good reader you're gonna find it difficult because GRE RCs are especially structured in a way which make it difficult to understand sentences so for that you need lots of practice now again you can use the Mahoosh platform or you can use Manhattan's 5LB book which is amazing it has around 150 questions in RCs and I recommend you practice and solve all of them also you can use the ETS official guide or the ETS official GRE verbal section it doesn't really matter the point is you need enough practice of similar RC questions which you're gonna say face in the exam and another important thing for the RCs is you need to get in the reading habit so you can either a lot of people recommend that you read US news which has good uh, structured English right and you read that every day to get in the habit of reading which I personally did not do what I did was I started reading books now although I used to read a lot of books growing up in my four years of engineering I had not read a single book right and I lost the habit of reading so what I did was one month before the exam I started reading books it was more of self-development books like Robin Sharma's uh, books that you get but the point was that you need to read read any book you want if it has a good vocabulary or you can read us news as well point is spend 30 40 minutes reading daily so that your brain is used to reading large paragraphs at a time right because that's what's gonna happen in the exam so that was it for the quantitative and verbal section let's walk over your exact study plan so coming the first question is how many hours you need to study the rough figure is anywhere around 150 to 200 hours right it depends on your current level right which basically means that if you spend two months right studying say three to four hours daily you'll be good to go and it's not as tough as it sounds you just spend two hours in the morning two hours in the evening and you have the rest of the day to do whatever you want now if you have just one month for preparation you condense it down right you increase the number of hours from three to say six and if you have more time if you have say three or four months so you reduce the number of hours spent every day right Although I highly recommend doing it in two months because more than that can make it seem monotonous and you, and you can get bored with the entire process. Another important thing is that you need to be giving mock tests regularly but do not give the mock tests every single day. I often see people giving the mock tests every day. You will want to do it also because it's easier instead of studying new stuff and practicing new questions you simply give a mock test a day and it takes three to four hours and you are simply done for the day right do not do that there's no point in giving a mock test every day what i suggest give it once in say five to seven days right so spend a week uh, learning new words practicing new questions and after seven days give a mock test and evaluate results it's very important that after every mock test you're evaluating where you went wrong right so even when you're memorizing the words for your GRE verbal section right there will come a point as it came for me you'll see that increasing the number of words that you're learning is not leading to an increase in your verbal score you need to spot that point in your preparation when it comes which means that your vo vocab is probably good you need to uh, focus on the reading comprehension even for the quant section you can see that you're getting questions of probability wrong or permutation and combinations wrong and you have to dedicate time to that particular concept that's how you need to prepare right you need to target your weak points one important thing is i recommend that you study both quants and verbals every single day do not just isolate the quant section or the verbal section because even in the exam your mind is constantly switching from quant to verbal and again quant to verbal right so it, it's better you do that same in your practice so say you study quant in the morning and then you do verbal in the evening your brain needs to be able to switch between these two so that's what you need to focus on 
So that was it for this video. I strongly believe if you follow these steps, you can easily get a 330 or at least a 320 plus. Right? It's not that tough. You just need the right strategy and you need to put lots of effort. So I hope this strategy works out for you. Also, if you have any doubts, do leave that in the comments and do share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel because I'm going to put videos like this a lot and see you in the next video.